Brown's draft so and so. That's not going to be the from the terminal tower. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I think down. I think it's going to be exciting for the city, but less. We've lived here a long, long time, and um, late April in Cleveland, Ohio, weather isn't wise, always. Yeah, they're going to have to account for sunny. that. They're going to have to account for that. But but here's the thing, you've got. Well, you, you're following. First of all, Nashville did a phenomenal job yes. this year, by all accounts. This year, this coming year, is going to be Las Vegas. How are you going to top that? You know, that's a good question. And I'll tell you what else. I mean, um, this is nothing but a show. Yeah. The draft. Right. But here's here's my con real concern. The uh, CBA expires after the 2020 season, the one they're working on now. Right. And and I hope there's not a work stoppage or a strike or whatever lockout, whatever term you want to use, that's going to disrupt the 2021 draft. And that is um, certainly not an impossibility. Uh, I'm, I'm what, hoping that... What will uh, they be after? What will, the, uh, what will both sides be after that they don't have? I'm not sure what the uh, owners could want more than they have now, but the players... I think they want more say so in um, in disputes and, and not let Roger Goodell have ultimate you know be the right. king. He's the owner's guy, so he right. has, he and, has um, ultimate say so. And I think they they want more um, compensation for retired players and and medical coverage and things like that. So I think that they could the sides could work it out if they're um, smart enough to to realize that both have a pretty good deal going right now. Yeah, they do, and not many years to play with because the average amount of time that a player will have is not as long as they think it is. Right, and and I hope that the uh, slotted uh, draft continues so right. you don't have to worry about holdouts and all that. Well, here, here's the other thing. You, you've got a situation with with the players, the, the football players, you hear a guy sign a six-year deal, eight-year deal, that, that's a phony number. That, that never very rarely works to fruition. Right. They, they get a couple of years and then they, then they get cut at the end because they have to make room. Football, the one where you have more injuries or more serious injuries versus baseball and basketball. Baseball and basketball, you have a five-year deal, everything's guaranteed. Right. Even if you're injured in year one, you get your money. That's not the case in football. That's, if I were them, that's what I'd go after. And I think that is, I think, guaranteed money. I should have added that. You're right. That's another thing they'll, they'll be looking for. But on that end, though, I, I think that you'll see shorter contracts. True. But, um, I think the owner would be foolish to give a player where you, risk of injury is so high, a five-year and whatever. No, but it million. could be a three-year for more money. Right. Yeah. And well, so, um, if they're listening tonight, that's what I would go after if I were yeah, them. And I, I think that I think they will go after that. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. Jeff Shudell is with us. Uh, lots to talk about. He and I were at the Cavaliers press conference yesterday. John Beeline introduced there. Uh, Cleveland gets the uh, NFL draft not this coming year, but the year after that. And of course, uh, the Cleveland Indians trying to hang in there. They've got the. Uh, uh, Tampa Bay Rays coming in and uh, Rays pretty good team although they've dropped two games behind the New York Yankees. You can follow us on Facebook by going to facebook.com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. Jeff Shudell and I return in a moment. Ex more sports and less Levine continues exclusively on cleveland.com.
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Jeff Schudel is uh, with us, 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Jeff, you, we mentioned at the top of the show that we've uh, done approximately 4,600 shows. Uh, I got a haircut this week on Tuesday, and uh, my barber has been cutting my hair for uh, almost 40 years, and uh, we're up to 490 haircuts, and the 500th is going to be free. <laughs> and, and I'm thinking of bringing cameras out to, uh, to verify exactly what we're doing. That's that's pretty cool that you know how many haircuts you've had from this. Well, thing. you figure once a month, maybe right. over yeah. a, a million years. Yeah. That, that's how it uh, comes out. Jeff Shadell is with us. <laughs> Indians a loser today, seven to two to the. Um, I, I don't know how. This is not a good team. This Kansas, this uh, Kansas City, this is Oakland team. Not, no, but not you know, remindful they, of Reggie Jackson and Sal Bando. No, but they seem to have the Indians number. They do. I mean, they won <clears throat> two out of three. I think it was out there. Right. And um, you know, as I was thinking this during the break, though. What what's I like about baseball is now the Indians are playing the Tampa Bay Rays in four, and he's all there. It's not a good matchup, but you you never know about baseball because it's not like um, when the Browns when they're, when they were zero and fourteen or whatever. Right. And you now, knew they were bad. Yeah, and now they're going to play the Seattle Seahawks or whatever it was in that fifteenth game. Um, you know they're probably going to get creamed. Right. But it's not the same way. In, no, because uh, every team has a pitcher or two that can have a good game or some, somebody you don't expect throw a good game also. Uh, but baseball, the way I look at it, I look at it in a, in a scope of 10 games in a row. If you can stay, if you don't go before, if you don't go under 5-5, five and five, if, if you, you win 6 and lose 4, 7-3, and 5-5 five and five even, you're going to be in the race the whole way. Right. But it's the group of 10 games that I think you've got to, if you're going to scoreboard watch, that's what you watch for. Well, I'm, I'm with you there, and I, I always equate a 10-game uh, span in baseball is is one game in, in football, right? Right. I mean, when you play 16 and 162. so. Um, and it doesn't matter who you're playing, as you suggest, and people say, well, they're just playing the Baltimore Orioles. It, a win is a win. When the, On October 1st, you'll get a call from the league office saying, okay, you play in the postseason and your first game is in Kansas City on Tuesday night. That's, that's, right. how, that's how it works. And, and, and I, think, I like Terry Francona's approach. That he says, uh, we're just trying to beat the Orioles by one run. Right. That we just want to score one run more than they do. Correct. And that's how he approaches these games. So, right. well, well, Hopefully it wears right off on the players. Let's go back to the Browns here. We talked about... The fact that the city of Cleveland and the Cleveland Browns will be hosting the NFL draft, uh, not next year, which will be Las Vegas, but the following year. What did they do to get that? They, well, just, they just kept hammering at them? And they had to submit a bid to the NFL saying why uh, Cleveland would, deserves to host a, uh, huh. the draft and where it would be and all that. Right. And um, so the Greater Cleveland Sports Commission, I believe, had to this drive with the Browns, of course, right. involved. And um, and there are some good venues here. I mean, the Rock and I mean, it'll be kind of cool to announce those picks on the steps of the Rock and Roll right, Hall. Next of to fame. the Beatles. Yeah, there you go. But but where are those people? All those people going to be standing? Right. Like they did in Nashville. I mean, that was. And you're going to have. Let's say it is at the Hall of Fame. You're going to have to have a zillion screens out there. And if, as you suggest, if the weather is a problem, then. Then uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, but um, it, it's a great honor. It's um, it it will it will focus people on the city of Cleveland and bring money in. But more important, where it's going to bring money from, is you you take a look at Cleveland on the map, and you've got right around it. You've got Cincinnati, uh, Buffalo, uh, Pittsburgh, uh, Indianapolis, and uh, Detroit. It's in Chicago, for that matter. It's not hard to believe that people from all of those right. those cities are going to come right. in. Right, right, and uh, and when you watch that draft, the, the fan, fan, I always, I always think, what 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 the 
profession are those fans and those Oh, do they have to? They don't have to take off work because they probably right. aren't working. And what was the guy? That's my accountant, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he's wearing a jet shirt. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, so the, there are people probably from all over, over the country yeah. would be here. You yeah. know, where would be a good place would be. I don't know if they could do it, but it, could they do a Burke Lake from the airport? Would that be a place where um, outside? And that just yeah, that just came to me. Um, no, my guess is you couldn't put tons of people in there for security reasons at an airport on a border of the United States. Mm. Just a guess. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> but good idea. I, I don't work for Homeland Security, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, I'm, I, was, I was trying to think of a uh, spot where you could have all those people right. standing like they did. I mean, they could do like at Mall C where they had the um, the Cavaliers where that victory parade right. ended. Think but about somewhere it. where you have a lot of people. Think about standing. it. What the city has had. Let's, let's just say the last five years, and we'll, we you can start with the Republican convention from two years ago. But when you think about what what we've had here, we've had a couple of we've had a World Series in '16. Right. You've had several NBA Finals, right? Yes. You've yes. had you you've had the NCAA tournament, and you'll have it again, I think, in the next. I don't know if it's this coming year or the the year after, but we've. If you're a sports fan in Cleveland, you, you're not, you haven't, you've, you've done pretty well for yourselves. Right, and, and if you live in this area, even if you're not a sports fan, I think you'd take pride in uh, 2019, the All-Star Game. Sure. Year. Well, I forgot the All-Star Game, baseball All-Star right. Game. Right, in, in, in 2020, I think the men's uh, tournament is going to, part of it's going to be played here. There'll be six games. Right. In uh, 2020. NCAA women right. coming. In, right, in 2021. The uh, draft, 2022, the NBA All Star Game, and in 2024, the Women's Final Four is going to be here. That's, that's pretty. I mean, think about that. Uh, not too many, and and that's for a place that doesn't have a, a dome setting or right. a, a retractable dome like Indianapolis or right. And I think that cities. says a lot about Cleveland. And you know what? I think you have to give LeBron some credit for um, making Cleveland. Yeah. No. You, you you also Dave Gilbert, not Dan, although Dan deserves some some credit, but Dave Gil Gilbert, the head of the sports commission, he's done he's he's done a phenomenal job. If we only had like five David Gilberts, this would be an unbelievable place. He should be the mayor, but um <laughs> he's too smart for that. Yeah. But I mean that's right. I mean and he should take a lot of pride in in what he has helped bring here. Jeff Shadell is with us. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. And uh, you can catch the excitement of live harness racing. That's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, as well as Saturday evenings with a special uh, racing event coming up this holiday weekend, uh, the 26th of May. And uh, post time for that is 6 p.m. Players Club members can enter the free handicapping contest every Sunday, and uh, you get a chance to win the top prize of $500 in cash. Free parking, free admission every day at Northfield Park. Jeff and I return in a moment exclusively on Cleveland.com. When my dad started Nature Stone, right here in Northeast Ohio, he created a solution for age-old concrete problems, unevenness, cracking, pitting, and more. Nature Stone solves all of these problems in garages, basements, and outdoor spaces. Nature Stone is beautiful, environmentally friendly, and always affordable. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of May and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Jeff Shadell with us. All right, we've talked Cleveland and getting the draft and all that. 
uh, but we haven't talked about Cleveland Browns. And I'm sensing, tell me if I'm wrong, the national guys who jumped on the bandwagon are sort of jumping off a little bit. Am I sensing that correctly or not? Um, I, and if so, I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not sure why either. I, but I, I'm telling you that once training camp comes here, it's going to be a zoo. It'll be like Johnny Manziel. The last several here. years, you've, you've, almost nobody came out to training camp. Fans. Right. They will this year. Yeah, they will. And um, I'm talking about like the national media. Right. And uh, the... Um, I think the Browns have tried to do a really good job to um, to make it easier to move from one field to the other, but I think that's going to be you're right. I think it's going to be cramped. Uh, people trying to move around is, is going to be a challenge. And I, people, I, I could imagine that there'll be uh, you have to like get your even though it's free, you have to get tickets in right. advance, otherwise you won't, won't get in. You know, it will be interesting. The the Browns have a, a good. PR staff, but they haven't been uh, they haven't been tested. Be, they've been tested with some bad things that have happened, but they haven't been tested on the positive level. And well, that's a fact. They're they're gonna they're, here, here's what I, I I don't fear this. I, I observe this that um, Peter does a terrific job, PR guy. Mm -hmm. He's he's looking at a fact a point where he's got. Freddie Kitchens with a hat on all the time, and not just in practice, just in, in regular meetings. John Dorsey wearing the same Cleveland Browns sweatshirt at all times. Have you ever seen two guys more uncomfortable in dress clothing than they were at uh, Kareem Hunt's uh, baptism? No, that that's not them. Uh, you're right. That's not their... I you're... could see the PR people saying, what do we do? Yeah. Well, you know what? Hey, I think that's part of Freddie Kitchens is, is that hat and... Uh, I think that's part of uh, John Dorsey is, is that sweatshirt. And you're right, they didn't look the same in, in, in uh, suit and tie. So um, good good for them. I hope they don't change. I, I hope Freddie stays just what, yeah. like he is. All right, tell me if I'm wrong on this. The biggest concern to me is the, the lack of, of – um, work as a head coach by Freddie Kitchens. That's something that concerns me maybe more than position players. Well, I've thought about that. <clears throat> um, there are a lot of good head coaches who were not head coaches before. True. I mean, you, you look at the Steelers. I always bring up this. Um, Chuck Noll was never a head coach before he got that right. job. He was pretty good. Pretty, he was okay. <laughs> and Bill Cowher, he, he was never a Head coach until he got that yeah, one, and that's true. And uh, Mike McCarthy in um, in Green Bay. I'm not sure of the guys you mentioned, Noel and a couple of the other guys. Did they also take on the role? Although the game was different 25 right. years ago, did they take on the role of uh, offensive coordinator and play caller? At the also? same time, no. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good point. I'm just talking about you can be a success as a first time head coach, right. but. Um, and that's going to be interesting to see how this shakes out because we were talking to Todd Monk and the Browns offensive coordinator today. And um, how is that going to mesh with him as the offensive coordinator? And you know that uh, Freddie's going, Kitchens is going to be part of that game planning during the week. Don't you think maybe after two or three games, Freddie will say, win, lose, or draw? Freddie will say, you know what, Todd, you, you take over the play calling. It's overrated for a head. There's too many things to worry about as head coach. Or is that self-defeating by him. We'll see. I mean, that, that could happen. Todd Munkin obviously has had success calling plays as a head, as a offensive coordinator. Right. So he has that going for him. And I think um, Freddie Kitchens, although he's been doing this now since January, I think the admit, what I think really gets head coaches who want to be the coordinator, and it's kind of like what you're saying, is all the administration duties that they have that you don't have as that, even as the offensive coordinator. You don't, yeah. better, you're just worried about the offense, right. the game plan, keeping your quarterback and players happy. Now, he's See, got to I'm deal. Worried, I'm worried from a new head coach position that let's say a guy gets injured in the game and he's got the doctors in one ear saying he's okay to go or he's not okay to go. Uh, you've got uh, uh, the balls at midfield and you're gonna, and it's coming up on if they don't get the third down, what do they do? Do they, uh, do they uh, run a play? Do they kick? Do they fake punt? You know that kind of stuff. Just, right. I just wonder if the speed of the game 
will allow him to be able to do that. We'll see. I mean, I um, I think Sunday. Once he gets to Sunday, he's he'll probably be okay. Why? Because the work has been stu- done. Right. It's all the stuff that you have to deal with before that. Now, this Jimmy Haslam. I'm this. I'm not saying anything about Jimmy Haslam when I make this remark, but when you're the offensive coordinator or the running backs coach, as he was at the beginning of last year. You're not you're not having conversations with the owner during practice. Correct. And um, now you are. And now you are. And uh, that's and nobody the, can tell him, the owner, to go go enjoy the practice from the sideline. Right. And um, and again, I don't want to. I, I would say that whoever owned the team, if Les Levine owned the team, I would say that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> but um, if Les Levine owned the team, I'd say, hey, now he's got to deal with with whoever it is. And, uh, Why do you think most coaches around the league talk to their talk to their owner during practice? I'm not sure. I doubt it. Probably not. But I know that he, Jimmy Haslam, likes to do that. Yeah, no, I know that. And uh, you know, and I, I'm, I'm probably Jerry Jones. I'm sure Jerry Jones. Jerry is Jones out, would but, probably uh, do it. I don't think Bob Kraft is out there talking to. Uh, no, he's doing other stuff. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch that one. Uh, I don't think he's out there talking to Belichick. Not at this point, no. I don't and, think so. Um, and probably fewer owners do that. Paul yeah. Allen, I don't, well, he's not with us, but I don't think he would. Whoever it is, I'm not sure. You know, that. I'm surprised about this because is, I was not out at OTAs. Was Haslam doing that at OTAs, or didn't you? No. Didn't you well, know? he was actually today. He was. Oh, down at the owners' at, meetings. At the owners' meetings. Yeah. Because you would think somebody would say to him, "Okay, you're doing a great job so far. You've turned it over to the right guy. Now you you can't get in the way right now. This is this is going on the right path right now. Don't mess it up." Yeah, and I, and I think he will not get in the way and um is having those chats i think he has those chats just because he enjoys being out there and yeah, uh, well, he's getting in the way and rubbing shoulders with uh with those guys and the players and that and um but that's just an example of something that you don't have to deal with when you're as a, a running, running backs coach right. Two two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call jeff shudell is with us. He covers the Browns, the Indians, and the uh, Cavaliers. If you'd like to get to us on an hour that we're not on, you, you can go to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. You can call anytime, leave a message. We'll use them on the show. 216-200-6650 is the number to call, the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Jeff Shudell and I return in a moment exclusively on Cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. Welcome back. More sports and less Levine. We got uh, Tim in Canton is very upset, Jeff. Mm-mm. He says Canton is capable of hosting the week-long Hall of Fame festivities, but not the draft. Got a good point. Well, um, <laughs> yes, I'm I calling on you. <laughs> yeah. The um, it is interesting that I think uh, that that they chose Cleveland over Canton. Um, maybe they figured. Canton gets that with the Hall of Fame that activities, and, and so give this to Cleveland. And apparently the draft, in, until Las Vegas comes in next year, 
the draft has always been in an NFL city. Right. As far as I know. Yeah. As far as I know. Uh, Cleveland Bill is upset. The Central Division is terrible. If the Tribe loses a few more games in a row, not improbable against Tampa, the Twins will be the only Central team with a record over 500. Bad season for Cleveland to cut salaries. Well, there's obviously a correlation there. Um, the one guy I wish they could have kept was Michael Brantley. I mean, he Can't signed, argue with that. He signed um, two years, $32 million with um, – with Houston, and I mean that's not three see, years. Oh, three years. I think. Okay, I believe and, so. And um, it was not an outrageous uh, no. contract. Now, unless, it's easy unless, for me to say that. Unless the Indians' doctors didn't think he could make it through the whole length of the contract. Yes, um, it's always easy. I've, I've said this before. It's always easy to spend somebody else's money. No question about that. And, Let's. And, uh, are we ready to go to the phones? I think we are. Let's find out. All right, let's go to BP, who's in Pepper Pike. Hello, BP. Hey, guys. How are you doing tonight? All right. How about you? Doing well. I just wanted to uh, mention, were either of you guys at the John Beeline press conference yesterday? We, we both, both were. were. And what did you, I'm just curious, because uh, what did you think of him? And I understand it went well, but what, what were your uh, impressions of him? I, I know start, you don't do impressions. I don't do impressions. <laughs> so Jeff does. So go ahead. What were your impressions? You know, I, I, I have to tell you, I didn't know anything about John Beeline before the Cavaliers hired him. I was very, very impressed by him uh, yesterday afternoon. I, I like his energy. He's 66. It's a great age. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, he's a, he's um, a whipper, young whippersnapper. Yeah. And um, I, I think he's got a lot of energy. And the... Uh, Kobe Altman, the general manager, said they liked him because he's a teacher. And, um, and these the Cavaliers have so many young players. And I think that that age difference is not going to be a, a stumbling block for John Beeline no. because he dealt with these college kids so and had success everywhere everywhere he's been. Les, Pretty he, impressive. Right. And, impressive. and if he took a team that wasn't very good, right. by the time he was done at that stop, it was good. A, a couple of things, uh, BP. Uh, number one, um, 66 years old, but he's bringing offensive and, offensive and defensive coordinators, so to speak, uh, with, with the NBA pedigree. Uh, we assume that's what's going to happen. Uh, but what, to counter that, he's got to worry about 82 games and all that travel. That's going to be tough for somebody who hasn't done it. I mean, he's done it. He's been on the road for recruiting and all, but this is, this is a little bit different. It is, and, and, um, and that's what gets in, uh, college players sometimes is the length of the season. Right, you go from 30 games to 82 plus playoffs. Right. Um, but I, see well, you, I don't know if the Cavs will have to worry about that part. Not, not for a year or two or yeah. three. But um, unfortunately, I, I, I think unfortunately, it's really Beeline good. won't have you know a great talent base to work with. You know, so yeah. But that's tell me, tell difficult. me about this though, BP. And I think I mentioned this the other night that that you've got some former NBA players uh, who are sending their kids to be controlled by him for four years. That that's got to be a pretty good feather in his cap, right? Right. And uh, right. And um, actually, for him now, he's going to get players. Uh, He'll be able to coach them for more than just one year. It's not going to be a one and done. Right. There's no one and done in the NBA. Right. You find a great player, good. you you've got him for a while. Right, and um, and that's a, I think one of the problems with college basketball. I'm no college ba basketball expert at all, but it seems to me that guys who play for one year, and then leave for the NBA draft, sometimes they're probably not ready. Not only that, they wind up with bad teams for the most part. Right. Yeah. If you're a really good player. And um, you're right. You're going on, on a bad team. Right. Zion, went, well, no, I mean, Houston, uh, Pelicans weren't horrible. But if the Knicks or the Cavs or the Suns had won that NBA lottery, then he's going to go a to problem. a really bad. But in the NBA, obviously one player really can make it. BP, difference. what do you think of the pick? What do you mean the pick? Of John Beeline? Yes. yes. Well, initially, I didn't love it because, to me, it sounded like almost like a Michigan bias because Dan Gilbert's from Michigan, and yeah, I always Michigan, knew that he wanted Michigan to get State. Tom Izzo. So I was like, oh, well, he couldn't get Tom Izzo, so we got, you know, the second best thing, you know, University of Michigan's, you know, basketball coach. Aren't you aware that there's a difference between Michigan and Michigan State? Right. That's what I'm saying. So oh, okay. he couldn't, he could never get Michigan State's Izzo, so he got, you know, like the next best thing to impress oh. his buddies back in Detroit. That's the, the part I didn't like about it, it but... 
after I, you know, learned more about Beeline and, you know, I forgot that he was at West Virginia, then he went to Michigan, you know, he, I didn't know that he went to two, you know, NCAA championship games with really not the best talent. If you no, look at the I, Michigan players that play with him, the, the best guy that ever played there was Tim Hardaway Jr., who's not, not even an NBA all-star. Right. So well, I think I'll tell you he what. has done a great job with, you know, with, with not the greatest blue chip, you know, he does not have NBA All Stars on right. that Michigan roster. And well, I'll still, tell you what, doing he, really was, well. he was the coach of the West Virginia team that uh, played Wake Forest with Chris Paul, uh, that game at uh, the Wolstein Center. And Mike Ganzi is now the assistant GM for the uh, Cavs, scored, scored over 40 points. And to me, do you remember that game, Jeff, at the Wolstein yes, Center? Yes, I, yeah. it, to me, it was one of the greatest games I've ever seen in person. It, mm -hmm. it, it, now, that's one little sliver out of a long career, but that was as exciting as you can get. But I think, all in all, the more I think about it, the more I hear about it, the more I like it. No, I agree, too. Like I said, my initial thought was, wow, a 66-year-old coach from Michigan. I wasn't loving it, but now that I've gotten all the facts in front of me and actually heard the guy, I mean, I do like it. I just wish that, you know, we had won that lottery even if we got, like, the top three picks. I don't like the fact that we went from the second spot to the fifth spot. That part really gets to me yeah we don't even jeff and i were discussing that before the show we, we don't even understand how that came how that works yeah the, well, yeah, the well, math makes no, no sense to me because um heading in the the capital is supposed to we're supposed to end up with that fifth pick that was our highest percentage it was, tw it was 20 percent and uh yeah. that's where they end up and how that works is, uh, well, I know how it works. MIT. basically they you know in the old like when the Cavs won the nba lottery to win lebron james or kyrie irving you know, when you have the worst record in the NBA, you had a 25% chance of winning yeah. the lottery. Then the next team was like, you know, 17%. Right. And but then, I, I so do know this. Eight, nine, and ten teams had very tiny odds of winning the lottery. Now they flatten it all out. Right. Well, I do know this. A lot of people who think the thing was fixed. If you're going to fix it, you're not fixing it so that yeah. New Orleans or uh, Memphis Grizzlies Memphis. get the top two. What I didn't realize is Memphis Grizzlies, they still don't even have a coach. So, I mean... <laughs> You know, and they barely have a general manager. They barely have a team. So, really, we got – I felt we got screwed there. You had teams like Memphis and New Orleans, struggling franchises, you know, moved up to the top of the draft. And, you know, Cleveland has proven to be a great basketball town. Look at all the sellouts, you know, when LeBron was here. Yeah. All right, BP, thanks as always for the call. I appreciate it very much. Take Two care, one, guys. Have a great night. You too. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. That's the number BP called. Sokolowski's University, and they want to make some history. They're combining uh, the uh, wines from the Wente family estates, uh, over 100 years in business there with Sokolowski's. They'll be 100 in a couple of years. They started back in 1923. It's the wine tasting uh, contest, not contest, but the wine tasting event coming up uh, a week from Sunday. That's the 2nd of June, starting at 3, going forever. If you want to get involved, uh, call 216-771-8967. 216-771-8967 for more information. Let's make history together. Wente Wines and Sokolowski's University Inn. Jeff and I return in a moment exclusively on Cleveland.com. The concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of May and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just the floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory.
next segment, we've got some how come quickies sent in oh, from good. audience, including John Patrick, who is on the Mount Rushmore of uh, how come quickies. Oh, good. So far. Good. Jeff Shadell is I with us. He's on the Mount Rushmore of covering every sport <laughs> there is to cover. And he, uh, he just gave out his age, so, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, I hope I could do this. Let's just do this for another 10 years. Liz. 10 years? I'll take that. Yeah, 10. Yeah, I would take that. All right. Uh, Jeff, of course, covers the Indians, the Cavaliers, and the uh, Cleveland Browns. What's your biggest concern about the Browns, if any? Well, I, I want to see um, some of those linebackers really become dominant players. Okay. And um, I, the, uh, the guys they drafted, I'm not sure that they're those players. How come uh, every guy the Browns draft sounds like he's going to be good? Yeah. I, well, they have some pretty great names, don't they? Mac Wilson. Taki uh, Taki. Taki. Uh, yeah. We uh, discovered he's from Walla Walla, Washington. <laughs> I thought he was from New York, New York. <laughs> but um, so that's, that would be my one concern, Les, is that, uh, and I still want to see um, who emerges as that starting strong safety. Right. So, and, and by the way, we, we understand where the, the Browns and every other team is one, one injury away, one quarterback injury away from wiping out the whole season. So we right. understand that. Right. And knock on wood, hopefully that, that doesn't happen. Um, doesn't it seem, when you hear Baker Mayfield talk, and is he getting married this weekend or one of these weekends? I yes, think I, I think it's before the training camp. I'm not okay. sure exactly. So, don't number one, it seems like he's been here a lot longer than he has been. Why that is true. And number, he's been, been here 14 more, uh, yeah, games worth. Yeah, right. And it, it, he also seems so much more mature than he did a year ago. He does. Um, I think last year he had the misfortune to be. Compared to, well, he was a misfortune to be compared to Johnny Menzel. Right. And he kept saying, I am not Johnny Menzel. No, but and he was a guy from that part of the country, that kind of swagger. Short. Yeah. Shorter sure. than um, your typical quarterback. Right. But that's where it ends. And, and plus, you know, he ran around uh, in the backfield. <laughs> my, my guess is being compared to Johnny Menzel was good for him because he gave him an extra. We now know that he needs certain things. He, he just needs some help to get ready. And if, if they're uh, comparing him to Manziel, that's just one more thing for him to be, to overtake. Right. Yeah. And like, and not being rookie of the year last year. That, right. It's um, a slight. Than Saquon Barkley, that's going to drive him a little bit now. I think he's probably gotten board. over that. You think he has a bulletin board? Um, I think he knows who this is him <laughs> on Twitter. Right. And um, so, I mean, I, I think this will be exciting. And now a lot is expected of him. Will he deliver? I don't see why he would not because, I mean, you know, I go back to him trying to plant that flag. It's a gutsy in, move. In, in Ohio. Now, plant a flag in artificial turf, I'm not sure how that was going to work. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I love the Buckeyes, but that's kind of cool that you would have. A, and I'm glad that he's a guy with that uh, – that nerve it, is as an Ohio State grad. It's okay with me. Now. All right, there you now. go. Yeah. Now, yeah, and uh, so I just like the, his approach because he, he will not back down to any challenge. All right, uh, now you talk. Of, now we bring up Beckham for the first time. Forty-five minutes into the show, what do we have? I, I, I mentioned that it was Art Modell who ruined the Browns, but it could be uh, Odell who brings him back. That's good. You can use it. Yeah. <laughs> And um, you know what? He's not here for the OTAs. How should? How much of, of a big deal is that? He um, he will be here, I assume, for if, if he is not here for the mandatory mini camp. That's a concern. On June fourth through sixth, that is a concern. Well, the thing that I I have a problem with is if he had a problem with Gittleman, the GM at New York, or he had a problem with uh, coaches that they've had, uh, Pat Shermer or whoever else they had. Nobody from Cleveland has done anything to deserve his his uh, upsetness. I just made up a word. Yeah, you know what though, that is. But you're right, and and I think if he wants to show people that that he was not a jerk, right? Then maybe He's not he, the guy they said he was. Yeah, then maybe he ought to be here more than um, making these cameo appearances. Because um, let's face it, the the uh, Giants did not trade him. Because they really wanted Jabril Peppers, and they really wanted that 95th pick in the draft. You don't think that, or, or that's seven, why? Even 17. No, he was a pain in the rear end. Yeah, and um, 
and he certainly is a, he's an ascending player. He's not a descending player. So there was a reason that they, they said, hey, we have a chance to get something for him. Let's do it. Right. It'll be interesting to watch. Uh, I, I'm concerned. I mean, he's the star, second star in this team, because to me, uh, Baker Mayfield is still the number one star. But it seems to me that offensive linemen, although they're, they're just supposed to block, I understand that. They're supposed to find out what coverage is going on down there. But here's the guy, Beckham, who's going to take all the accolades, and it's going to be the, the guys who he hasn't even met yet who are going to set the stage for him. You know, you know I'm glad you mentioned that. Because if I were an offensive lineman and you refer to the other players as skilled positions. Right. As opposed to. Yeah. Do you think, do you want to tell the left tackle, Joe Thomas. Right. Or, he's unskilled. Or, yeah, that he's unskilled. You tell him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I think that's just the wrong terminology. All right. We've got some skilled people who sent in some how come quickies. When we get back, we'll take a look. Your job, uh, when John Patrick's come up, you, you have to do what a, every guest has done over the last three, four weeks, and that is. You have to grade him. Take the two that he has sent in, come up with a number on a 10-point scale. Keep in mind, if you give him a 10, he, he vows that he won't quit sending him, but I'm a little concerned about that. Oh, so no, take that into consideration. Northfield Park uh, is your home for live and simulcast racing. That's Monday uh, through Wednesday as well as Saturday evenings, plus special racing uh, card this holiday weekend, Sunday, May 26th, post time 6 p.m., Lady Lux Clubhouse is open Saturday evenings with a buffet for just $15.95. Call 330-467-4101 for reservations. Free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. Jeff and I return one more time. More sports and less living continues exclusively on cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate so no mold or mildew. Plus, Nature Stone is backed by Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty. Get Nature Stone installed in your home by the end of May and get up to half off. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Tomorrow night, the D-Man from WTAM Radio, Dennis Maniloff, joins us. You see us live from 6 until 7 Eastern Time. I know we have people from all over the country, even the world, watch us, so we're letting you know when we do it. It's uh, 6, p 6 to 7 p.m., uh, and that is Eastern Time, and uh, we do it Monday through Friday. All right, Jeff. Jeff Shadell with us. we got some how-come quickies here. Cleveland Bill says, how come Athos, Porthos, Aramis, and D'Artagnan make up the three musketeers? Sounds like four to me. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? It does sound like four. Yeah. Well, that's why it's a quickie. Uh, Mr. Gullible. Hey, Les, how come a hungry clock goes back four seconds? <laughs> it, it hit you four yeah. seconds later. Yeah. How come a dinosaur with an extensive vocabulary is a thesaurus? I like that one. You like that one, too. All right, here we go. Th this is like the Jeopardy guy. This is the guy who's on top. They've got to knock him off. John Patrick. He's got two of them, and you have to judge, okay? All right. How come when I gave my wife a bottle of tonic water, I swept her off my feet, <laughs> off her feet? Swept. Swept. Swept, yeah. Okay. How come only one company makes Monopoly games? I'm going... Uh, <laughs> Out of ten, ten being the highest. I'm going to give the Schweppes one a five. A five, okay. And I'll give the Monopoly one a 
7.5. That's good. 5 and a 7.5, that's like a 6, 5.75 or 6 no. point something. That's okay. He, you can't, listen, Ted Williams struck it, you know, went, went for the uh, apple every once in a while. Your, your boy, Ted Williams? Yep. He didn't get four hits every game he played. Right. Yeah, even, even when he hit, I think, 407. <laughs> he, he, uh... I, that's one of the great stories of all time, that he, had, he was hitting, what, 401 on the last day, and he didn't have, they didn't, he had a doubleheader. Right. Managers, who was the manager? Was it Joe Cronin in those days? I, I, I can't, I think it was, but i sure. For those that don't know, Jeff is a big uh, uh, Boston uh, all fan, all sports, or no, just, really, just, uh, baseball? just Red Sox. Really. All right, so he's a big uh, Boston Red Sox fan. All right, so he's got he's hitting 401. If he doesn't play, he finishes with 401. He says, "No, I'm playing." Yep. He's got a double header, and he yeah. goes he goes six for eight. Yeah, yeah. To finish at 406. Yeah. I mean, that, how about, wait, how about that? Last game of the season, you he raises it seven points. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, but that really, and I think he struck out that. Uh, I forget the number. He struck out such a that, minimal that amount year of time. Or yeah, anything. that year. And well, even for his career. But, I mean, that year, it, it was, I don't remember the number now. I knew it at one time. But uh, unbelievable that he would play as much as he did. How about this? That Joe DiMaggio hits 56 games in a row in, in, in 1941. And uh, Ted Williams has his 406 season. And because a couple of uh, sports writers hated him, they didn't even put him on the number 10 on the balloting for, the, uh, uh, for MVP. And as a result, he finishes second in the MVP, and I think two voters voted him off completely. That's ridiculous. That's absurd. Yeah. True. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that just – and not, I'm not saying that just because I like the Red Sox. It's not just ignorant that you could would do something for like Ted that. For Ted Williams hitting 406 and not getting a vote for the – MVP that year. No wonder he didn't like sports writers. He, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know what came first, the chicken yeah. or the egg. Um, what, what did you like in Yastrzemski? I just liked the way he hustled out. I was, um, one of the games I saw out there, up there in Fenway, um, I, I think they, they were playing the, uh, the Yankees. I went to see a Red Sox Yankees series. That was about what year are we talking about? Uh, 1973, 74, somewhere okay. in there. And uh, as I remember, Thurman Thomas, the Yankees catcher, was up. And, uh, and he Thurman lined, Munson. Thurman Munson, yeah, yeah. sorry. And, and, um, and he lines one off the, uh, the, the wall on left, the green monster. And, and Yaz picked it off the wall in, and in one motion threw him out at second. And, and he was out by like 15 feet. Right. But, I mean, it was just a really <coughs> nice play. And you know, he's done... I'm sure he did that, I'm sure, countless times. But it was cool to watch him do that. And just, just like I said, one motion, he just takes the ball and... You know, I think Yastrzemski, who worked on fly balls coming off the wall every day, would laugh at other outfielders who'd say, oh, it's no big deal, I'll play it off the wall. Well, here's Yastrzemski, who played a million games there, and he's still practicing taking right. it off the wall. Yeah, you know, and, that's, and that is that story. I mean, you think about, like, Kobe Bryant. Uh, and LeBron, for that matter, and, and uh, Michael Jordan, those guys practiced harder than anybody around them. And, uh, I mean, Kobe Bryant, was all, he was the first one in the gym uh, all the, every time. Well, that's what made them right. what they were. Michael right. Jordan, so, that's and, what made right. him what, what he was. Yeah, and that's what made Yaz yeah, what he was. So, um, you know, you just, I admire guys who really work at their – the best guys work at their craft. Look at golfers. Look at the – they hundreds and hundreds a day. Right. And they've right. been doing it every day of their life. Yeah, and they hit from... And, and think about that. A golfer in a tournament, you have one bad hole. One bad hole knocks you out of the tournament. Right. Out of, out of 72 over a four-day right. period. Right. And, and, you know, they don't just hit the ball from the, on the range. They hit from bad situations. Yeah. That's what I've said Put it before. in a divot somewhere. Right. I mean, golfers getting out of trouble, I love to watch them do it because... Yeah, but they still need, from a... Marketing standpoint, they still need they still need uh, Tiger. Yeah, as as true. good as some of these guys are, Kepka. Yeah. How about Kepka played under over, way over par the last day and still won walking away. Right. Yeah. He had, he almost a good thing for him was another three or four holes to go. Right. Good point. All right, that'll do it for us. We will have you on as soon as we can. Is that all right with you? That's my pleasure. I always love being on with you. Terrific. Jeff Shudell of the News Herald. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. The D-man Dennis Maniloff will join us. 
Thanks for watching or listening of all the or Skyping of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent.